Hi, I'm Dave from Sailing Laguna. We've taken a year off work to sail the Caribbean. Last episode, we had a look around St. Martin, visiting the famous beachside runway where the planes pass just over your head as they come into land, and then, of course, they attempt to blow you off the beach as they throttle up, up to take off. We also highlighted random things like the wide variety of marine stores and the ease of using your tender to visit them, as well as the seemingly surreal graveyard of sunken boats left behind from Hurricane Irma four years ago. But now it's time to leave St. Martin and make our way to Antigua. Farewell. See you down the track. We're about to go through the Simpson Bridge. Simpson Bay Bridge. Another great job by Samantha at the helm. <laughs> easy peasy. Campbell, what have you thought of St. Martin? Bye bye, St. Martin. Where are the cruise ships? Now, when you are planning your passages against the trade winds in June in the Caribbean, you kind of need to compromise between looking for a day when the headwinds are, are reduced, but, but then conversely, the still weather um, increases the chances of squalls. And well, this footage kind of shows how we got caught out by a squall. People have asked us if you ever felt unsafe on the boat, and I have to say no. Although the swell, the wind and the chop was worse than the footage shows, it's still really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. All right, well, we're just heading off from uh, St, oh God, where are we? St. Bart's. So it was a bit rough last night, so we just pulled in uh, to the anchorage just over here. Anyway, we're gonna head out now and we will see what conditions are like um, and see if we can make our way to Antigua, which is around the corner and a day's sail. Ah, uh, geology. Do you think my school principal will support a geology excursion to examine the folds and faults of St. Bart's? It was an early start out of St. Bart's this morning, sort of like about 5.30 a.m. we up anchored. Uh, we've got Antigua now in the background that you might just be able to make out. We should be there by about 8.30, so it's been, a, I guess I did a day motor to get there. But um, what I'm certainly noticing at the moment is just how close all of these Caribbean countries are. It's a bit, you know, different when you come from Australia where, you know, there's things are miles away. But um, Montserrat is just in the background there. You've got uh, St. Kitts and Nevitz is just in the background over there. And of course Barbuda, which I can't actually see Barbuda, but it, it's just over there. So it's weird having all of these different countries. It's all within eyesight. Crazy. We quarantine flagged at Jolly Harbour for the night before heading around to English Harbour in the morning because we could meet up with our friends Mike and Dee from True North 44 and English Harbour also has its own customs and immigration office. Welcome to Antigua. All right, well, we've basically made it to the end of the thorny path. So yeah, hooray for us. Um, so we're actually anchored here in what's called English Harbour. It's a very historic little place and it's actually got a number of different things to do. So in this video here, the first half of the video is definitely going to be about all the different little activities that you can do in the water, on the land and here of course at the historic uh, Nelson's Dockyard. So have a look at it, check it out and let us know what you think at the end. 
Antigua had a COVID quarantine period, which was determined by the health officer upon arrival. Now, on paper, that sounds a bit scary, you know, going into a quarantine period that you don't know how long it's going to last for. But as I've mentioned before, we, we listen to the other people who have already done it. And so as soon as we arrived with a negative PCR test, the health official checked us into the country and we were free to go about our business. Can you turn it, Campbell? No! Can't. Oh. The footage you see here is from Nelson's dockyard, which has a well-documented maritime history dating back to the 1600s. You can learn all about it in the on-site museum, which is the perfect complement to the artefacts and historical sites that are dotted all around English Harbour. There are a number of placards around the site that explain the history of each of the buildings. However, once again, I think I gained far more from this experience than what the kids did. Um, building, I think. What did they used to repair here? Um, the sails. Sails. Come in here. Even though it's shallow. And then they would lift up into a loft that is no longer there to repair, repair the sails. Another interesting thing was that the archaeologists are still actively searching for things in the harbour. And in fact, while we were there, they were investigating an 18th century French naval ship that was believed to have been used the in the American Revolution. For centuries was that women had no place at sea. The only women happily accepted on board by many sailors was the ship's figurehead. Despite being viewed as unlucky aboard ship, women were viewed as the best navigators and the eyes of a female figurehead were thought to be able to find a way through the seas when lost. Nice and freshly baked bread and some pies. They're yummy pies. Chicken Lovely. pies. All right, so one of the things that you can do at English Harbour is uh, we've got the Pillars of Hercules out the front here, but we're actually out here today because we want to come and uh, do some snorkelling. So there's a, I don't know whether you can see in the background here somewhere, there's a number of um, dive boys you can tie your tender up to. And so the boys and I have just done a little bit of a, a snorkel out here, um, uh, out the front of the Pillars of Hercules. How about that, boys? The Pillars of Superheroes. All right, well, here we are at Gillian Beach in uh, English Harbour. Um, you can actually see the giant anchor here just sitting here on the beach, which is one of the features to check out while you're here. It's actually got like a really big, and I mean like, you know, like the chain, the chain links are like the size of your leg. Um, like they're huge. I've got no idea how they used to move them several hundred years ago. But the chain goes all the way across the harbour. And apparently what they used to do is the ships used to have trouble getting out of this harbour um, in a hurry and with a headwind coming in. So they actually would, would basically anchor the ships here with the sails up, ready to go. Um, certainly in case any enemies came along, that they could actually get the ships out and then of course fire the cannons off to uh, yeah, try and take the battle to the enemy. Now something else to check out here at Freeman's Bay is the actual snorkel sites here on the southern um, or southeastern end of the bay. Um, so there's two shipwrecks. Well, are they shipwrecks if they're deliberately sunk? One of them looks like it was deliberately put there anyway. Hopefully I'll have some GoPro footage to try and show you. And there's also one of the old um, giant anchors up there as well. So um, that's it. You can snorkel the, the chain and the anchor that's basically visible on the beach. You can snorkel the shipwrecks and the anchor that's up here in the um, end of the cove, end of the bay. In terms of snorkeling, Freeman's Bay has got a, um, a bunch of little things to look at. So, yeah, make sure it's a must do.
Now, chartering is a nice way of getting a taste of liveaboard life, but without the luxury of being able to wait for favourable weather, it may turn out to be a uh, less than desirable experience. We certainly wouldn't be heading out there in conditions like that today. All right, well, I'm going to get my dork on now and tell you about a documentary I watched. Um, it's called, it's a BBC documentary called Nelson's Caribbean Hellhole. Um, and of course, it's about the guy who Nelson's Dockyard is named after, kind of. But it describes life um, hundreds of years ago in English Harbour here, with the number of ships in here and what it would have been like with, you know, the raw sewage going into the water and all of the other garbage that was thrown into the water. But it also details um, how this site right here was actually, actually contains a number of uh, bodies left over from sailors from a few hundred years ago. So the ships would come in, they've got dead bodies on them, you know, or maybe they've just died on the ship while in harbour here. So instead of throwing the bodies overboard, they've, um, yeah, they've dug a hole here in the nice soft sand and, um, yeah, buried them there. Uh, when you go to the museum in town, you'll actually find out that there was a hurricane that dumped a whole bunch of water up here in the low-lying area, and then that water had to basically rush back out to the sea. When it rushed through this area here, it basically, of course, you know, dug away at the sand, and that's when the bones became excavated, and they could actually, they actually then knew that there was body, there were bodies buried beneath here, and so that's every few years they seem to be doing an excavation here. Anyway, we're going to go on a walk now up to Shirley Heights, all the way up there, um, and there's a big loop that you can do all the way around um, to make your way back to here. So let's go on the walk and check it out. The walk starts at the southern end of the beach and you can see in the map that it's one big loop. One of the things that I think helps your sanity is that while living on a boat it's important to get off the boat and go and explore the surrounding area. On this walk you get to see some of the rugged southern coastline of Antigua, the different types of vegetation, both terrestrial and aquatic, bloody sarcassium. On top of the hill and a graveyard which was in the Nelson's Hellhole documentary that I mentioned earlier. In non-COVID times, Shirley Heights, um, the outlook at the top of the mountain, is a well-known venue where you can grab a beer and a bite to eat while you enjoy the sunset and the sound of the Caribbean steel drums. Uh, stupid COVID though, there's no steel drums at the moment. The walk then winds its way down the ridge line, back some, past some picture postcard images, back to Galleon Beach where you started. Are you sick of English Harbour yet? Okay, just one last thing. Uh, there's a little fort on the western side of the bay. Park the tender at Nelson's Dockyard. Of course, you have a good look back over the dockyard as you're walking out there. And, uh, and head out to the point where you can consider what it would have been like to have the tall ships poised in the harbour with the sails set, but of course tied to that big anchor chain, not knowing if, if the approaching ships are Spanish, French, if they're pirates, or if they're actually your English countrymen. Now, speaking of pirates, uh, as a side note, it's been nice listening to the Pirate History podcast while sailing through the Caribbean and visiting all these forts and historical places from hundreds of years ago. So what has the rest of Antigua got to offer? At the end of English Harbour, you can park the tender at the grocery store and you can hire cars. Uh, the main restaurants and the small township of Falmouth Harbour is right there. Um, this area is a haven for the rich and famous in peak times, but it's not hard to find a berth in July. Heading further afield, we drove around the island, which gives you a good idea of the simple but functional housing. Many Australians would love to have homes like these to call their own, but regulations and planning wouldn't allow them to be built. Um, if you don't know, Australia has obscene property prices that prevent a lot of people from being able to own their own homes, but I guess that's a discussion for another time. We headed over to one of Antigua's best known tourist sites, Devil's Bridge. You sort of get the feeling as though this place would be packed when the cruise ships are operating, but at the moment, of course, it's empty and I even felt a bit sorry for the poor vendors in the local stalls. We, anyway, we had a look around, 
we checked out uh, Long Bay Beach, which looked really beautiful, but it was just too early in the day for us to stop our tour already. We then headed all the way to the other side of the island to Half Hyde Bay and walked into a beach restaurant, which was hosting a, a wedding. Now, although it was quite warm, it was still quite weird that the ceremony had actually started uh, before the guests actually left the shade of the restaurant and walked out to the shade under the umbrellas. The poor bride and groom were just sort of standing there in front of the celebrant. We then saw an opportunity to really bring a smile to the boys' faces. The water park, which was easily visible along the beach, um, looked like a great activity for them to take part in. And the lifesavers even joined in, you know, pushing the boys down the slide there to really make their experience all that much more enjoyable. I think the boys really did have a blast that day. And it's time now to talk about some of the uh, not so glamorous parts of traveling. Uh, COVID testing in Antigua was shocking. Not only was it the most expensive at about $200 US each, but it was also really poorly run. Hey boys. We arrived before 12 Cooper. and we weren't finished until after four. Um, they had about 30 of us waiting to get tested for this infectious disease. And they had us standing in the hallway of the hospital where we could easily infect other people. And given that we'd just come from St. Martin, where it was a free test in a drive-through that really was done really quickly and efficiently, it was just completely bizarre. And well, if you watched last episode, you would recall that Sam's father had been sick for a long time and had passed away. We checked into a hotel at the end of English Harbour uh, for some comfort and some good Wi-Fi for his funeral. But it does get worse. Only a week after Neville's funeral, Sam's mother suddenly passed away. This was a complete surprise, as she looked so well in the weeks since Neville's passing. Marilyn was always very supportive of Sam and I, whether it be renovating a dump of a house or to sail the Caribbean. Uh, the daughter of a seamstress, I remember at Christmas time when I randomly turned up with a, a crappy old trailer sailor, she was measuring up for new cushions before the trailer even came to a stop. She was very loving and supporting of, of her three daughters and, and her grandchildren will always remember being spoilt rotten when they went to Nana's house. She'll be greatly missed and it will take a while for us to imagine a future without her. So next episode we have a few things to consider. With Maryland's and Neville's passing, with hurricane season heating up, with changing lockdown restrictions in Australia, and of course we're also approaching our final destination, there's a few things that we need to think about. Anyway, we'll catch you then.